moment we open up in prayer. Lord Jesus, I ask you to help us today. Lord, to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And God, I know this is a familiar place. But, oh, Jesus, you came out victorious. So I ask you to lose the spirit of victory in this place today. God, I'm thankful for your word. We're thankful, Lord, for an ushering in of another saint. Bless our service today. God, let the grace of God that passes all understanding and the peace of the Lord be upon this family. And Lord, help us not to sorrow as the world, but God, to know that again we shall see face to face. Anoint that which is done today. Lord, we give you the grace and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Robert Laverne Tripp, Jr. made his final trip home December 8, 2021. He was a resident of Gallatin, Tennessee. He was the son of Laverne and Edith Tripp. He was born December 19, 1964. He is survived by his wife of 21 years, Shanda Tripp, their daughter, Hannah, their son Larson, both of the home, and Madison Moses and her husband Jared of Redlands, California, one brother Terry Tripp and his wife Kim. He had three nieces, aunts, uncles, and cousins. He was raised in front of a worldwide audience through Christian television who witnessed his giftings from a young age. He began playing drums for his dad on the road at the age of 12 to eventually have a 30-year career as a producer and a drummer in Nashville, Tennessee. Rob's brilliant and musical genius and vocal abilities were truly a gift from God. He was a Grammy award-winning producer and he produced countless gospel projects touching countless lives through his anointed music. He was the founder and the pastor of the Fireplace Fellowship for 18 years where his passion for souls was displayed. He and his wife have sown in local foster care children. They care for orphans monthly and they gave thousands to worldwide missions. His legacy will be laughter and the music with a heart to see restoration in the lives of all those that he touched. If you knew him, you loved him, and you found him to be a loyal friend. Rob loved to travel, and he did so for the gospel's sake until his final journey. Rob was faithful to his call. He finished his race, and he kept the faith. He will be deeply missed by those that love him. We know Rob has heard God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I'll be brief today. Um, in this life, you and I fight one fight, and that's to keep the faith. And that's what the writer said. He said, I have fought the fight and I have protected the faith. And he said, there is henceforth laid for me a crown of righteousness. But when we die, the final battle is then fought and we don't get to do anything with it. Paul said this, he said, I know in whom I have believed. And he said, I am persuaded, not just wondering, he said, I am persuaded that my God is able to guard and protect what I committed unto him against that day that is to come. He was talking about the day of death. When you and I passed on and when Ra passed on, not the devil, but death 
came to Rob. We think in terms of, well, he's in a coffin and we don't get to see him anymore. That's just temporary. He isn't there anymore. This is why the Bible said that you and I don't grieve as the world grieves. Because grief makes you think something is permanent. And we as believers know that's not permanent. That's just temporary. And so we have the understanding that, yes, we're going to miss him. It's a horrible thing to have somebody abruptly taken out of your world and you weren't planning on it, and especially at the age that Rob has left. But the beauty of it is, and this is what will give your family comfort, is that when death came, when Rob's breath left, he came for Rob's soul. But all he got was an empty box because the scripture says that God, the day of death, protects. He guards the soul. And when hell came after Rob's soul, because God had had it committed unto him by Rob, the angels of the Lord stood there and said, not today. You can't take him. This is why the Bible says that angels, hallelujah, came and carried us away into Abraham's bosom. And so it doesn't matter that the enemy got the empty, empty box. What he wanted was what was inside of it, the treasure in the earthen vessel. He didn't get that. So we rejoice today that our friend is not in torment. We don't have to have a service today and we weep because we wonder where he is. We rejoice in the fact that God kept that day protected and Rob's soul went home to be with the Lord, and so shall he ever be with the Lord. Shanda asked me to give a few remarks today about our good friend Rob Tripp. Uh, what a sense of humor, how greatly he will be missed. But before I, want to, before I say anything about Rob, I want to say what an honor it is to stand beside your family during this time because you are a mighty woman of God. And we have stood by and watched the fight of faith that you have fought for your husband. And I give you honor today, Shanda. Don't you give her honor today? So I met Rob when I was about 16. He was uh, about 12. And we were, we were in uh, California uh, doing TBN. And instantly, our mothers became best friends. And Edith was best friends with my mom. And I've had the privilege of um, walking with the Tripp family uh, for many, many years. And they've been our dearest friends. I had the, the opportunity to go overseas with uh, Shanda and Rob to Haiti uh, many times. And so if you know, if you know Rob, he's, his sense of humor is very witty, very quick witted. And, and w there was always something good to eat. Everywhere we went, there was something good to eat. My husband uh, loves to work out. He pumps iron and he runs and all that. And I told Rob, I said, you're the only man that I know that can get my husband to eat a Snickers bar with that Diet Coke. And he did. But I, I remember one time we were in uh, Haiti right after the huge earthquake. We had gone over there and uh, we were going uh, door to door. And a lady came out with her little children. She came out on the front porch, and she had a little boy and a little girl. And she tried to give Rob her children. And she said, I can't feed them. I can't take care of my children. Will you take my children back to the United States of America? And Rob stood on the front porch of that woman's house, and he broke down, and he wept like a child. And he said, I'm going to give you the money. I'm going to go back and raise the money 
for you to take care of your own children so that you'll be able to feed your children. And that is exactly what he did. He supported that woman so that she could keep her own children. And so I honor I honor his legacy. I also want to say that he will always live on in his children. I remember when Lawson was about five years old, they brought him down to the bridge, and we feed homeless people under a bridge. And Lawson came. They had instilled the word of God in Lawson so strongly. The Bible says to train a child in the ways that he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. So they brought him down around Christmas time, and Lawson led about 500 homeless men and women in the sinner's prayer and people were saved and gave their heart to Christ. That is a wonderful legacy that Rob Tripp has left behind and I honor him for that. He was fun. He was funny. He was a man of God. He loved people. He loved God's people. But he was a brilliant musician, very accomplished musician. Uh, I'll never forget, back in the year 2000, I went through a debilitating depression, and I stayed in, in the house for weeks and months at a time in a dark room. And I saw Rob out one day, and he said, are you singing? And I said, no, I'm not. I'm, I've, I've gone through depression. I said, I've, I've been in a very, very dark hole. The Bible says that words fitly spoken are like apples of gold in pictures of silver. And the Lord anointed Rob Tripp, and he said, I'm telling you, it's time for you to get out of that dark hole. And I'll never forget it. It jarred me. It woke me up. But the Spirit of God was in his words. And so he and I went in the studio, and we recorded a song. And Shanda wants uh, to play this song for you today because... Um, this was something I think that he had never done before. So we're going to play this song for you. But all the, the, the music behind is Rob's voice. All, all the instrument, everything is his voice. And so I'm not sure that he had ever done anything like this before. It was a lot of fun. And so she said that he was proud of it. And so we want to play it for you. I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm going up to see I'm going up. I'm going up to see my Lord. Well, Elijah and Elisha went one day up to the mountain so Elijah could pray. Said Elisha, I think today's a day. I'm going up to see my Lord. Going up, going up. I'm going up. I'm going up to see my boat. I'm going up to see my boat. Hallelujah, I'm going up to see my Lord. Now, one of these mornings, bless my soul, King Jesus, gonna come back and carry me home. Gonna shout hallelujah on the streets of gold. Going up to see my Lord. Going up. Going up. I'm going up to see the boat. I'm going up. I'm going up to see the boat. Going up. I'm going up to see the boat. Hallelujah. I'm going up to see my Lord. I'm going up. And chariots are fine. Going up. Going higher. To see my love. Going up, going up. Going up. I'm going up to see the boat. Going up. I'm going up to see the boat. Going up. I'm going up to see the boat. Hallelujah, I'm going up to see my love. Hallelujah, I'm going up to see my love. Hallelujah, I'm going up to see my love. Well, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Matthew Henson. And I've... I've had the privilege of knowing Rob Tripp for a few years now. But I've had the privilege to serve him. 
And we're just going to have church for a few songs. Is that okay? This is all that I know how to do to worship the Lord. And this is why Pastor Rob, a couple of years back, asked me to be his praise and worship leader because this is all I'm good at. So if you guys will stand with me this morning, we're just going to get excited. And we're going to celebrate his life. Amen. because of what I've done but it's because of what you did Jesus oh, oh because of who you are I give you glory oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. because of who you are Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are.
your hands this afternoon. Oh, it's just because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Oh, Jesus, because of who you are. just for a second. Lord, we worship you. Come on and lift your hands. Lord, Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Celebration that you're holding him right now. That he's wrapped in your ever-loving arms for eternity. Lord, we worship you. Because of who Thank you, and you may be seated. I have known Rob Tripp since he was 10 years old. We were more than just friends. Rob and Terry and I have been brothers for over 45 years. When it comes to being a singer, Rob was a vocalist extraordinary. He is a musician everybody admired and respected, a songwriter. In fact, he would love this service in the spirit of he being dead yet speaketh. If he were here today, he would break out in song and we would hear him sing, I don't want to hear a sad song. Sing me a song about Jesus. He was a Grammy award-winning producer, and a great producer brings out the best in everybody else. He had that effect on all of us. He was a man of great strength, of great spiritual authority. I have never known Rob to be intimidated by anyone or by any challenge that faced him. He was one of the most hilarious people I've ever known in my life. Always so much fun to be around. When he walked into a room, the room became lighter and brighter for everyone who was there. About 18 years ago, he and Shanda 
and Hannah, who was just a toddler at that time, spent a weekend in our city of Florence, South Carolina, a weekend of ministry at our church there, and after a great Sunday lunch, they were in our home for the afternoon. And that was the first time I heard Rob and Shanda say, we feel the Lord calling us into the ministry as pastors, and we have it in our heart to plant a church. And they shared with me that vision. I immediately had a witness to that, knowing their gifting and their anointing. And uh, it has been a wonderful experience to watch the Fireplace Fellowship from afar over these many years, having such an impact not only locally, but regionally and even globally, because uh, they believe that if the vision of the local church is not large enough to reach the whole world, then the vision of the local church is too small. Shanda and Madison, Hannah, Lawson, Laverne and Edith, Terry and Kim, all of the others in this great family, well-meaning people at a time like this will say to you, I'm sorry for your loss. But when you know where something is, it's not lost. There will be times you will want to sense being near Rob. And you will not have to wait until you're in heaven to be near him. Anytime you want to sense being near Rob, all you have to do is find yourself in the presence of God because that is where he is and he will be forever. In closing, I would like to say that the last few weeks, the last few days, and the last few hours of Rob's life remind me of an Old Testament character, Enoch. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God and his ways pleased the Lord, and suddenly he was no more. I can imagine a conversation between God and Enoch, God saying to Enoch, son, we've been walking together for quite some time now. We're a lot closer to my home than we are to yours. Why don't you come on home with me? And just a few days ago, I can imagine a conversation between God and Rob going like this. The Lord said, Rob, son, we've been walking together for quite some time now. And we're a lot closer to my home than we are to yours. Rob, son, why don't you come home with me? May God bless the memory of our brother Rob, and may God bless, uh, bless the great legacy he leaves behind. Now it is my privilege to introduce to you our next speaker. Would you welcome Matt Crouch as he comes? I was uh, not sure we could be here. Lori and I, my wife, just is sitting back here. We just flew in from Dallas this morning. The uh, greatest thing I get to say today is what our last communication was uh, between Rob and I. Everyone knows, everyone's mentioned how funny he is, and his legacy is an amazing thing and all of that. Part of his legacy, though, is the fact that one time he accidentally mooned my mother-in-law. And 
that will live forever in the, my mind and hers. We mention it often. In fact, if you think about it, you've never really been mooned until you've been mooned by Rob Tripp. <clears throat> yeah, that'll do it. So, um, our last communication, and it, look, you know, everyone in here knows Rob. He was usually funny and usually irreverent and usually all that. And, but then every once in a while, when he did hit you with that really straightforward love thing, it impacted you so much because you just sometimes it was kind of from behind and you weren't, you, you weren't ready for it. His last text to me near my birthday, uh, just back in October, was one quick little thing, I love you, period. And it got my attention. My last text to him was, I love you. So I get to say that the best way that I could have said goodbye I got to say it that way before he was, you know, not able to communicate with me anymore. And, and you know, it's a, it's a, it, <laughs> I, I, I went back with the family, which made me think, if I'm part of the family, this is one seriously dysfunctional family. <laughs> um, <laughs> but all of you know our love for you guys, and we got to communicate that, and Shanda, you're just your text directly to us kept us, you know, it was just amazing. You, uh, you know, I mean, the reason I'm here, Laverne said it to me back in the room, the reason I'm standing here is because of Lori. And I immediately torted back, the reason you're standing here is because of her. The reason Rob was doing what he was doing because of you. Behind every great man, there's a woman rolling her eyes and <laughs> Wow, you like that one a lot. <laughs> and, um, you know, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have not come. It was, you know, I had to kind of move some things. And, um, and it, because it was Rob, I mean, come on. He's just one of the most loving, sweet, precious people. And we all know that. And that's what I came here to confirm. I'm going to miss my dear friend. I don't remember much of my life without knowing him. And, um, you know, with that mother-in-law incident I told you about earlier, blazing in my mind, he'll live in my mind forever. And he's a dear friend, and I love him. So I got inserted in here. I don't know who to, to uh, I guess I could sing. Or Dean and Mary are here. They could sing. You guys want to sing? I'm kidding. So, I'm done. Laverne, you, is it your turn? Whose turn is it? Crab family. Come on up here. For crab. Hey, man. I guess I'm the crab family, so I'll have to do. Um, I just want to say, Shanda, we're praying for you. And, uh, you know, Rob was, was just the most sincere person uh, that I could ever be around, I remember. And I won't go, go long. I know there's a lot. But uh, he gave my wife the opportunity to, uh, Laverne uh, gave my wife the opportunity to tell her testimony for the first time. And I remember coming out of that studio and Rob stopped her and I. And we're green. We're nervous and all that kind of stuff and he grabbed us and he said you cannot mistake the anointing and he just began to just pour into us and encourage us and that's just who he is and it encourages me and I'm so thankful to be a part of this and honored and I pray God's comfort over you today I could not understand 
many times in trials weakness blurs my vision that's when my frustration gets so out of hand oh but it's then i am reminded i've never been forsaken i've never had to stand one test alone that's when i look at all my victories the power of god rises up in me and it's through the fire my weakness has made strong oh, he never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb he never offered our victories without fighting he said help would always come in time just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in just hold on my god will show up yes he will he will take you the mighty hand of God he'll shield the flames again again oh he never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb he never offered our victories without fighting he said would always come in time oh yes he did just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and that lying devil tells you throw your hands up and give it no just hold on my lord will show up yes he will he will take you through the fire again so just hold on my god will show up yes he will he will take you through the fire again yes he will again That was pretty good singing, Aaron. On a scale of one to ten, it was a ten. You were four siblings short and you still did it. And I want to say that every one of my children would be here if not for the road. That road thing, you know. So, I'm pretty sure I just got permission to roll my eyes. Yeah. They said, but Matt said behind every great man is a woman rolling her eyes. So I have a great man. So what? My husband does not speak publicly. Now he speaks at home. The first year we were married on Thanksgiving, y'all will remember this, Brian and Aaron and Amanda. And, you know, we'd, I'd cook for 50 hours, gathered the kids around and said, okay, well, it's time to eat. First year we're married. Steve, would you like to pray? Guess what he said? I don't pray out loud, I'm Baptist. With my hand up. So today you have your chance. You want to speak? Watch him. I said he'll be our resident crier. I met Rob Tripp many times professionally. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Nice to see you, Laverne and Edith, and Rob and Shanda and Terry, and 
we'd see you at the Black Eyed Pea back when we first moved here. I saw you there a lot of, a lot of times. We both must never cook, right? I just knew you when I saw you. I used to watch you all on TV, and I loved the cooking show, Edith. I knew who Shanda was. And one day I got this call from this woman. Years after the Crab family came off the road. And, you know, we can be vulnerable and searching after having spent 30 years in ministry. Right? We pretend we're not vulnerable and searching, but we are. Bruised, hurt, distraught. I said, I'm done. I'm going to get a real estate license. And I'm going to sell more houses than anybody in this town. And I got this call from a girl one day. And she's really on her game. This is Shanda Tripp. I said, I know you. And she said, I want to buy a house. So as it transpired, we met a couple of times. She said, can you come meet me at Laverne Studio where Rob's at? I needed to talk to Rob about signing some documents. In this business setting of a contract and a real estate transaction, I walk in and trying to be the funny comedian that I always become when I'm nervous and insecure that somebody's going to get in my business. I walk up to him and he said, how are you doing? He said, I'm the local Pentecostal preacher. And my sarcastic comeback was, you know, I don't trust Pentecostal preachers. With my hand up, that was my first private conversation with Rob Tripp. And do you know what he said to me? That's okay. I understand. It's all right, girl. You do you, but there's coming a day that God's going to fix that. And I want to speak to you. He got up in my business before I got up in his. First encounter. He's, it, was like a, it was like a kingdom connection on steroids. I'm just telling you. The trajectory of that, I mean, my trajectory of life changed in that office at your studio, Laverne. He said, you've counted yourself out, and you're not out. And I want you to look deep inside and find the ministry in you. Rob Tripp was a minister to the minister. He was a minister to the broken. And every single thing he did was not rooted in doctrine. There was never a root of super spiritual self-elevation. Self it was all just rooted in love. He loved people. How he loved you. How he loved you, you, you kids, the girls in Lawson. How he loved his parents, his brother. He was unashamed. I remember the Mother's Day post he would always post for you, Edith. So unashamed. Didn't care if somebody thought he was a sissy boy smearing on his mama on Mother's Day. It's all right. He did it openly. And today, you know what his legacy is? His legacy is that thing that transcends the grave. It transcends time. It transcends pain. It will literally be the one thing. We have this saying in our, in our family, and it's love is stronger. It's stronger than death. It's stronger than hurt. It's stronger than uh, any kind of health issue. And I know y'all loved him, but boy, he loved you back. And I just want to say that everything 
my life changed that day. And I know that sounds very dramatic. I'm a woman. Everything's dramatic, right? But he put something in my gut on that day that said, believe in yourself again. I bet everybody in this room would say, I've had a moment like that with him. Where he got a kind of in my business. Believe in yourself again. God has not counted you out. You're not finished. There's work in you. There's ministry in your gut. It's your job to crawl in there and find it and figure it out again. Reinvent ministry, Kathy, he said to me. And what a friend Rob Tripp has been to me. I want everybody in this room to remember the music, phenomenal. We've all talked about that all day long. Phenomenal. I think I'm a music snob, and I think he's amazing. But his legacy was his love. It was his love. So today, I will tell you my life would probably be in a different place had not Rob Tripp bought a property for me. Chapter in a book, chapter in my book, and you've all got your own chapters about Rob. I believe in saying it. I've said this to Rob, and I'm so glad I've said it to his face. Give people the accolades. As Matt said, tell them you love them. Do it. And I'm so glad and thankful that there have been many occasions where I've said to him, you know how much I love you. And he would say, I love you back. You want to talk? Please. I know I love him. He's a great man. I'm going to miss him, and I know y'all will. Good afternoon. It's a privilege and a blessing to be here. My wife Brenda and our son Timothy and myself loved Rob Tripp. And we love his family. And we'll continue to pray. Rob was always very kind and edifying to me about the records that the Lord blessed me to record. And he told me one time that he and his family took a trip to Florida and that one of my CDs just stayed in the whole time over and over and over. But I learned the rest of the story today from Lawson and Hannah who were in the back seat. Long about the ninth hour, and they were kind when they told me this story, Shanda. I mean, they didn't break it to me hard or nothing, but long about the ninth hour, they said, good gracious, Daddy, we love him too, but please turn it off. And so I learned today that I never knew that my songs then became a threat. Y'all quit arguing, I'm putting Tim back on. So new uh, limb to my ministry, and I'm thankful. By divine inspiration, the Apostle Matthew recounted the birth of our Lord Jesus. In Matthew 1, verse 23, I'm sorry, 22, after he had told what would happen by prophecy, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet The virgin will be with child and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Our resurrected Lord bookended that in Matthew 28. 
beginning at verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And surely I am with you. How long? Always to the end of the age. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Rob and the Tripp family have spent their lifetime making disciples, teaching people that Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. I was there that night in Bethlehem And when Neil and the boys came to the moon in that tin can at Gettysburg, Omaha Beach, and Vietnam, I heard every soldier's cry and every mama's prayer. I was there. I was there when you took your first breath. When you sorry I was there when you took your first breath when you stole that lucky strike and like to choke to death when you were waist deep in Carter's Creek and Pastor John dunked you down to the water and raised you up for air I was there I'm always around I was then and I am now and I'll be here when tomorrow comes when a road comes to an end I'm where you start again I'm never farther than a word away You've always got a friend When your grandma passed I was in that house When your grandpa ran down the streets of gold To show her around I was there night on highway nine when you answered the phone and ran right through that stop sign I was in the cab of that big rig and that trucker's ear made him swerve to the right and miss you by hair I was there when you're feeling alone, look up 
I'm the one who answers prayers And I'm always there Amen. My, what a song, what a singer right there. Uh, Shanda, thank you for asking me to say a few words. Honored to do so. And she asked me to take a look at some of the production credits uh, that Rob's been... Um, honored to work with throughout the years. And my, it's a who's who, I'm telling you right now. Listen to this. Obviously, his mom and dad, Laverne and Edith Tripp, Donnie McClurkin, Dottie Rambo, Karen Wheaton, John Conley, Day Wind Music Group, Russ Taff, Candy Christmas, Squire Parsons, Sonia Isaacs, Trinity Broadcasting Network, The Booth Brothers, Eddie Crook Company, Ann Downing, Aaron Wilburn, Song Garden Music Group, Second Generation, Triumphant Quartet, Lily Knowles, Gene Watson. And over the last 25 years, he and I have been blessed to work together on over 3,000 songs. From folks like the Williamsons, Dunaways, Heaven's Mountain Band, Heart to Heart, Barry Rowland and Deliverance, um, Dwayne Allen of the Oak Ridge Boys, Jimmy Fortune, Larry Gatlin, Fairfield Four, Marty Rabin, Jeff and Sherry, the list goes on and on. Those are Hall of Fame production credit, folks. Hall of Fame drummer right there. And a Hall of Fame friend, I promise you that. Just a couple of uh, thoughts from my heart when thinking about what to say about someone that you're so close to. I found a few scriptures in the book of Proverbs that really fit the bill. Proverbs 18:24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And of course, that part of that scripture is talking about the Lord. But I'm here to tell you that to me, Rob Tripp was closer than a brother. Terry, you didn't know this, but there's a third trip, brother. And I'm the one, my friend. <laughs> I've heard that before, that I do look like him. I'll take that as a compliment. Proverbs 17, 17, a friend loveth at all times. One of the things that I will miss most is when we would be doing sessions together or even when he wasn't uh, on a session, I was at his place doing uh, vocals. He would come in and sit around and we'd sit around sometimes literally for hours and just talk and pray and appreciate each other. I will sorely, sorely miss those times. You know, in that scripture that I read a moment ago about a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, I've got a funny story. I wasn't going to do it, but I mean, after the moon story, I have all liberty right now to tell just about any story. So I'll tell you this one. After, after you're through with a recording session, the folks that you're working with normally want to take a picture of the band that recorded their album. And so we would always do that. I've got hundreds of pictures like that with us over the 25 years. And Rob always wanted to get in the back and have the band in front of him so, right at the point of the time of the click of the camera, he would goose one of the musicians. So you see many pictures <laughs> with, with me and the band, and right at the time of the picture taken, one of the band members is doing this. And you knew that was the one that Rob got. 
So to all of the musician friends that continue to work with me, just want you to know that I will be taking the Rob Tripp mantle. And we go to take the pictures. One of you is in trouble, boys. That's all I can say. I will end with this. When I did my Facebook post after I heard that he had gone home to be with the Lord, I started typing and I thought, my word, I am going to be here all night. So I just hit delete. I deleted it all. And I boiled it down to this. I loved my friend, Rob Tripp. Rob Tripp loved me. He knew it. I knew it. And that's all that mattered. I will miss my friend, but the good news is I won't miss him long because Jesus is coming, folks. And he's coming for his children. And when he does, we'll be together forever and forever and forever. And to that I say, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. glad you're here. Have no fear, cause Jesus is near. You're our guest, so we'll treat you best, and uh, homie, you're gonna be blessed. Friend day. Friend, 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 friend day. With the peace of the Lord and his power, you're gonna receive in this hour. So look at your neighbor and tell them this. There ain't another day just like this. This is Friend Day. It's Friend Day. Friend Day. This is Friend Day. Friend Day. At the fireplace. This is Friend Day. I love Friend Day. Fireplace Friend Day. This is Friend Day. Fireplace. <laughs> that was the Kanye anointing on my brother. Shanda wanted me to give a special mention here, and I believe it's only right. Uh, what an amazing service to be put together in 36 hours. And it's easy to do when you're working with the best. Thank y'all. These are Rob's brothers that spent a lot of time with him. And, of course, the praise team. And I want to thank Cornerstone for coming through for us as well. And the crew, everyone has been so gracious. Thank you so much. <sighs> Five weeks ago, yesterday, I got a call around 9-ish from my sister-in-law saying, Terry, would you go get Rob? He is in the bed. He's at home. Of course, he hadn't been feeling well, and, and she was at the church handling some things and said, you know, I know you've been working out, so you can lift him. <laughs> and uh, I made the drive over to, I said, of course, and I went to, to get him. He didn't know I was coming. He was alone. I went into the house, 
kind of felt weird, <laughs> you know, breaking into my family's house. Went into the bedroom, and, of course, it was dark and all, and he was in there. And I said, Rob, Rob, and he kind of stirred a little bit, and I said, it's Terry, it's Terry. Uh, I'm here to take you to the hospital, and so you need to get up. And he said, well, man, um, I'm not feeling good, and uh, can, can I rest just a little bit more, just a little bit longer? I hadn't slept good. And I said, well, I'm going to go in your living room and uh, just text me when you need me, but I'm here, and, but you're not going to stay here. I'm taking you to the hospital, and if I have to drag you, I will. And my brother was very hard-headed, and that's one thing I loved about him because when he made his mind up, it, that was it. And uh, he said, well, just give me a moment. And so I went into the, to the living room, and, and he texted me. He said, can you come in here and help me? And I went and helped him and got his boot on and different things. And <clears throat> I did not know it at that time, but that was, and I've told Shanda this several times, that was the greatest gift she's ever given to me. Because I got to drive him from his house to the hospital and it was a 15-minute ride. And in those 15 minutes... I stand here today looking back at that, and every question is answered. Because in those 15 minutes, he said, Terry, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm done with all of this. And I, of course, being a man of faith <laughs> and confession, and we speak the word only, I said, Rob, stop. Don't talk like that. I don't want to hear that. I'm getting you to the hospital, and we're going to get help. And then he began to say things like, um, I feel like I have failed my children because I hadn't taken care of myself the way I know I should have, and I'm not the best husband because I should have taken care. And I said, Rob, shut up. Just stop. I don't want to hear that. We're getting help now. I said, quit worrying about the past. We're getting help now, so just stop. And... Um, he just began to say things in ways I had never heard. Is the only way I know how to say it. And then he began to say, man, I'm just so proud of Madison and who she's married and Hannah, the schooling, the ministry school. And he said, man, I'm just, I'm such a grateful father. And Lawson, he began to brag on Lawson, his preacher's son. And, and just, he was, these are things he really never said to me. And I, I really, I'm, I'm like, well, man, I know, I'm a, I'm a happy dad too. I got three great girls. I'm, but I, it wasn't sinking in because he would kind of keep going back and forth. He said, but Terry, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. And I said, well, just stop. Just stop. I don't want to hear that. And, and really don't want to hear it today, okay? And then we begin to joke a little bit and just reminisce and just have fun and be brothers. And <clears throat> right before we got out of the car, uh, as Matt has already eloquently put in his last text to, to Matt, Rob put his hand on my neck and said, Terry... With tears in his eyes, he said, you're the best brother a guy could ever have. Thank you. Thank you. I checked him in, and then Shanda came, and I left, and that was the last conversation I had with my brother. I only share that today for one reason, because I know how the enemy of our mind works. We ask a lot of questions. And how many of you have lived long enough in church to know that in moments like this, some of the goofiest Christians can say some of the goofiest things? Can we just be real? I've heard everything from, well, God took him. Well, can I just encourage y'all with something? God is not the taker of life. He is the giver of life. So God didn't take 
my brother. Okay? He's the giver. Now, I've also learned this. God is also the receiver of life. And so I only tell you this little 15-minute drive that is etched in my memory for the rest of my life because of questions. Well, why this? Why that? We stood in faith. We spoke the word. We declared. We decreed. We had prophets saying, wake up. We had everybody. We had churches all over the world. Wake up, Rob. Wake up. I have learned this one thing, and I'm all about faith confession and the word of God. And if you know me and my ministry, and if you knew Rob and his ministry, we stand on the word no matter what the circumstances. Okay? We stand on the word. But I also know studying spiritual authority, spiritual authority says love never goes against the choice of a person. Love honors a choice. And as hard as it was for me to hear that day, Terry, I'm tired. I'm just done. Today I stand in comfort knowing my brother made a choice. I didn't say we had to like it. (laughs) But love honors choice. Don't ever judge anyone who's in pain who's walking through something because you don't know what's in their heart and what's going on. And and just like it was eloquently put by my other brother, Carl, he and God had a conversation. And I truly believe my brother said, I'm ready. Well, then come on. There's been a lot of prophets and a lot of people that have spoken words over the past few weeks. I'm going to throw my hat in the ring. (laughs) And I'm going to give all of you a word from the Lord. And this is for those who have asked, well, why this, why that, why didn't this, or why didn't that? Here is a word from the Lord for everybody watching and all of you here today. The word from the Lord is this. Expel the why. Enjoy the wow. Expel the the why and enjoy the wow wow what an awesome man of God he is wow what a father he is wow what a husband wow what a friend wow what a musician wow The millions of people he touched. Wow, what a legacy. Wow, what a church. And wow, how amazingly funny he really was, man. My brother could take any moment, somber, sacred. He could make the Titanic a funny movie. He really could. It didn't matter what was going on. (laughs) It didn't matter what he had to do. He would get you to laugh no matter. If he had to imitate Chris Farley, he'd imitate Chris Farley. If he had to imitate Benny Hinn, he'd imitate Benny Hinn. If he had to shoot a moon. (laughs) You know, and I know when Matt said that, I looked across the crowd and some of y'all weren't laughing. If that offends you, take the day off and just laugh, okay? Let brothers be brothers. It's okay. (laughs) You might be religious if. Okay, I'll just say that. (laughs) So, of course, he had a funny side. You know, a lot of people have a funny side. Every side to Rob was funny. Every side. And, of course, I have many, many, many stories. But it was a couple of them I saw. uh, Our cousin Thomas Hart posted something, uh, something I had not Remember in a while, and this was Rob's favorite story actually to tell on me, but of course he and Thomas, our cousin, was here. This was about 20-something years ago, and I was singing at a church in Alabama, 
and Rob and Thomas went with me, and we were cutting up. Joe, Rob was being robbed. Just, it was fun. We get to the church, and while I'm singing, Rob had a way to look at you. He could just look at you, and you would laugh, or I would. He would just look and do something. And I am, I'm up here singing, and I look in the back, and Rob and, and Thomas, I get Rob and I's eyes locked, and Rob just kind of looks at me, and ladies and gentlemen, I lost it. I lost it. And everybody in the church thinking, man, he's got the spirit of laughter. The spirit of laughter has come in. I thought, man, where is Rodney Howard Brown when you need him, you know? I said, and I could not get my composure, and it got so bad, I started doing this, and I ducked under the pulpit, and Rob... And the audience is looking around like, what's going on? And Rob and Thomas look at each other like, did you do something? No, I didn't do anything. And Rob's like, he's just, and I finally came back up and I said, Rob, does the Lord have a word from you today to come up and we got to blame God, right? (laughs) Uh, If you flew here today, let me give you Rob's secret for traveling. Uh, And you can use this going back home if you're flying. My brother, he knew how to keep the middle seat open. He and I traveled some together, and I would take the aisle, he would take the window, and so we would board first. This works great if you're flying southwest, so we got on first, and Rob, just his timing, impeccable. (laughs) But he would take the barf bag. And so while people are getting on the flight, I'm sitting on the aisle, he's in the window, and he would take the barf back. And when people were about four or five rows ahead, they would look at me, you know, and try to make eye contact, like, are you going to let me in? But then they would see Rob. (laughs) Rob didn't say anything. He didn't look at them. All he would do, he'd hold it about right here and go, uh. (laughs) Uh. We had the middle seat on every flight we flew. Wow. (laughs) Oh, man. Jesus, there's so many stories. But it's already been said, as funny as he was, he was that loving as well. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who have made comments. You've called me. You've texted everybody. Thank you guys so much. Um. I, I wasn't going to, I will share this because, man, it's just so awesome. I also have his last text to me. And it was that night, the morning that I drove him to the hospital. He texted me that night, November 4th at 9.25 p.m. In all caps, with two exclamation points, it says, thank you. I love you, heart. After today, for sure, dot, 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 you are. I read that to my daughter a couple of mornings ago, and she goes, what does that mean, you are? (sighs) What a gift. Because the the only (laughs) argument (laughs) that I can remember having with my brother was when I was growing up, he would look at me and say, Terry, you're the best brother in the world. And I'd say, nope. You are. He'd say, no. You are. And I'd say back to him, mm-mm. You are. And how many of y'all know Rob was a little bigger than me back then? So he won. And he got to say it to And that's the last text he sent to me. Wow. Wow. So we don't have to grieve like the world. We have a wow Savior. We serve a wow God. And he has wow peace for us to experience right now. And so thank you for honoring my brother who I know was ready 
Because he told me. He told me. And that answers all the questions. That answers all the questions. Thank you so much. I want to invite his children to come. Madison, Hannah, Lawson. Aren't they beautiful? I love you. It's been such a beautiful day. I was trying to figure out last night what to say. And trying to think, trying to think. And I just said to myself and to the Lord, I, I have no words. no words for how much I love my dad I can't explain that I love him so deeply and I have no words for how much I'm gonna miss him I already do so much, so, so much. But I feel so assured and so at rest when I think about the joy that my dad is experiencing right now the peace, the healing. That brings me a lot of joy and a lot of peace knowing that he is where we live our life to be. And I know that, I know that, and it's so comforting. And along with that, I know that I am going to see him again. And I don't know that I've ever, you know, you hear people say that I, you know, they lose someone and oh, I know that I'm gonna see them again and it's comforting and, and I have always known that that's the truth. But until right now, I haven't fully understood that. And I just look forward to the day that I get to see him again, that I get to talk to him. So I am sad not to have him here with us anymore. I am going to miss him. But I'm so, so happy for him. I really, really am because he is with Jesus right now, experiencing the glory of him. And I just keep trying to fathom what that's like, but there's no way to. And I just know that he is the happiest that he's ever been here on earth. And so um, I just love him. Like I said, there's no words to accurately describe how much 
he has been the best dad. And I'm really, truly blessed. We all are. And I am so incredibly grateful for the time that I had with him and all that he has poured into my life. My husband's life as well. I can't even describe how thankful I am. So, I honor him. I love him. And I'm so grateful to have had him in my life for 28 years. Thank you all for coming and for your beautiful words. They depicted him perfectly. I typed out a couple of pages, so I'm just going to read it. So I wanted to start out with a couple of stories about my dad because my dad was very funny, like everyone has said, and his personality was bigger than probably all of y'all's combined, if I'm being honest. Um, so one evening about five years ago, all four of us, we gathered around the table after my mom cooked a meal. We all sat down together, and we were expecting a good meal. Yeah. Little did we know my mother made lemon chicken and it was not the greatest dish I've ever had in my life. I don't like lemon. Yeah. I don't like lemon and my dad did not like lemon chicken either. My dad accidentally said out loud, I'm running to McDonald's. He texted me right then at the table and he said, oh crap, I shouldn't have said that but do you want some chicken nuggets? When I was 10 years old, I wanted to get my hair colored. My mom would not let me get it colored at such a young age. My dad said, Shanda, you go to the hair salon um, all the time. I'm going to start taking Hannah. Hannah, go get in the car, and I'll grab my keys. Sorry, Mom. So <laughs> my dad and I hopped in the car, and we went to the hair salon at Walmart because that was the only hair salon my dad knew about and I got my hair colored bright red at 10 years old after my hair appointment was over I said oh no dad mom is going to be so mad because it was it was bright red okay and he said you look beautiful He said, I'll take the blame for you. So I didn't get in trouble. So that was good. <laughs> From these stories, I... I reminisce on the humor that my dad had. If you knew my dad, you know that he was the funniest person you've ever met. His personality was bigger than life. He was the most giving man I, I have ever met. If I wanted something, he would buy it for me. If I wanted to go somewhere, he would take me. He always supported me and uplifted me. He was there for me like no one else was. He was my covering and my rock, my shield and my safe place, and he was my home. I knew I was safe and always had anything I wanted and needed when I was with him. As I'm standing here right now, I really don't have the words to put together to tell you how I actually feel. I've thought about all the whys and why did this happen. And my first thought was, why couldn't he... You know, wait till I'm at least married and have children. And because, you know, I wanted him to walk me down the aisle. And my mind just went there and I thought of all those different questions. And, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't know. Um, 
but I truly don't understand some of the questions and thoughts that I have, and I don't understand why all this had to happen, and why he left the earth at only 56. Just within the past couple of days, I've sat back and thought all of these questions, and I've cried out to God, asking him to give me the answers, but some things are best to not know. Sometimes in life, we'll have questions that won't be answered, and that's when faith comes in, and I still have faith in God, even though this situation is lifeless at this moment. My father had integrity, and he was a man of his word. He was there for you no matter the time of the day. He was a hard worker in everything he did, and he was a leader. His character has stood the test of time, and anyone who knows him knows that he always kept his promises. I can't remember one time, one time, that my dad has ever broken a promise to me. He's kept all of them. He did exactly what he said he was going to do, and he did everything in excellence. No person on this earth has treated me better than my father did. He always brought me flowers on Valentine's Day. He would wake up every year on my birthday singing happy birthday to me, and he would have a little candle and a cake in his hand. He always stayed up late every Christmas Eve and would send out presents for us, so on Christmas Day he would tell us that Santa visited us the night before. When my dad would hold my hand, he would always squeeze it three times, which means I love you. For the past 20 years of my life, I have been told just about every single day that I'm just like my father and what an honor that is. I'll never forget one of the last conversations I had with my dad. He held my hand as tears were running down my face and he looked at me and he said, Hannah, why are you crying? Are we going to trust in the God we preach about or not? Twenty-six hours later, he went into cardiac arrest, which has led us to here one month later. I'm telling you all right now that I'm still going to trust in God that my father has preached about, sang about, and talked about his whole life. <clears throat> Even though my father is no longer here with us, he is with Jesus which is the place he has preached about at the Fireplace Fellowship for 18 years now. His legacy and heritage will still continue on through me, through my siblings, and my family. If my dad was here right now, I know he would tell me that he loves me with his whole entire heart and to trust in the Jesus, and that is what I'm doing. James 4.14 says, How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, and then it's gone. Your whole life can change in one second. Always live in the moment and never take it for granted because we aren't promised tomorrow. Thank you. When you think of a man you might picture someone who's big and strong, who loves cars and guns, who just can't get enough of throwing the football around. And while my dad certainly fits some of that criteria, when I think of the man my dad was, I don't picture that. What I do picture was someone who was compassionate, with infinite love, that does not care about what the person has done. A man who was the exact same person behind the pulpit as in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Someone who took authority, not because people feared the boss, but because people respected the leader and the friend. One day during early November, when my dad was indescribably tired, sick, and in pain, he looked at me as I was leaving to go drive to school. And he said, son, I'm sorry you have to see me like this. And I said, dad, it's, it's okay. And I didn't tell him at the time, but I knew exactly why I was completely fine 
with it because I knew that I would rather have a sick, tired father who had the strongest character than one who was healthy and strong, who was morally compromised. My dad was someone who I never saw yell at my mom one time. He was someone who never neglected to tell me he was proud of me, even if it was seemingly undeserved. And dad, that same compassion and thoughtfulness is the reason I've come to the conclusion that you would not have chosen to go if you did not think we could handle it because you cared so deeply about us. So dad, I take it as a compliment that you thought I and the rest of my family in the church was strong enough to go on without you. So I believe that we're all going to make it our mission to carry out your legacy the way you would have wanted. And this next song holds a very special kind of significance that they're about to play. As the lyrics to the chorus on this song are the last thing my dad typed out uh, to post on Facebook. He shared other things, he liked other things, but this is the final thing he typed out himself. It is the lyrics to the Jaron Davis song, I'm Gonna Make It. Beautiful. Beautiful. He would be so proud. I've heard people say today that share their memories of Rob. What a great man he was. To a pastor's kid, he was royalty because he had that unique calling and ministry and gift to be able to find people who thought too much of themselves and topple them from that pedestal. That's a gift, and I, I'm going to miss that being in the world. People said he preached the gospel. I disagree. He embodied, in my opinion, based on everything we've heard since he left us from so many, the scripture that says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Rob Tripp didn't just preach the gospel, he lived the gospel. And if he were here to speak to you today, I believe with all of my heart that he would say, keep your eyes on the prize, keep heaven in your view, and Jesus is with you no matter what you face, you're going to make it. Feel. 
Sometimes my strength has failed And though I have tried the very best that I could My weakness has prevailed But then I Shanda, you're going to make it. Madison, you're going to make it. Hannah, you're going to make it. Lawson, I want you to know something. You've already made it further than you realize. And you're going to make it all the way through this. Laverne and Edith, I know that joy is going to come in the morning. Because there is no greater joy but to know that your child walked in the truth. And to know, Terry, as much as we preach it, sometimes we don't see the things that we live until we have moments like this, but a brother was born for adversity. Quite often misunderstood and misrepresented that a brother is born to bring adversity. There's truth in that because we add to the verses that we now see. But the reality is you were there with him in adverse times and God placed you there. And you know it. Only are you were, you were a good brother to him. He thought very, very dearly and fondly of you. So times like this, I look around and I wonder, why am I here? And I got the answer. I was accepted by Pastor Rob Tripp. All of us have been neglected or rejected or overlooked or misunderstood. He took a shot. Took a shot. Came and saw a guy, knew some people that knew him. But then he invited. He invited me into his life. He invited me into what was very near and dear to him. 
Matter of fact, to be quite honest with you, I knew him. I now know things about him that I did not know. I'm probably one of the youngest relationships in here. Five years. Five years. I counted as grace in my life to have been in him. I didn't know him as a humorous one. I could see it. I could see it from a distance. You could recognize it. But he and I didn't have that relationship. No, he quickly allowed me into deep, very sincere and genuine areas of his life of his journey of life. And we spoke on a very intimate level with one another. That I'll always cherish. That I'll always remember. He allowed me into his family. Allowed me into his church family. Of both which he was very sincere about. When Rob said something to you, He said it in the way that he hoped that you would remember what he said. I think he had a desire for restoration and for a true remembrance, bringing people back into who God made them, not who or what ministry had made them or is making them. He had a taste in his mouth for what was good, but he also knew what tasted bad. I'm saying nothing about lemon chicken right now. So with a few closing thoughts and a few exhortations, I want to speak a valedictory message to you. If you look at that word valedictory, you can remove A-L-E-D and you get the word victory. A led victory. Rob had one like the Apostle Paul. He had a farewell speech. We've seen now the bits and pieces where he was speaking into that narrative of where things were. Matter of fact, I want to grade Pastor Rob this afternoon. I want to give him a grade. We understand that terminology. It might be a surprising grade to you, but I'm going to give him an F. I'm going to give him five Fs. And these five Fs are Fs that I want you to walk away with also because our lives are being graded and we're in one of the greatest classes and institutions that you could ever find on the face of the earth right now. The preaching of the gospel, the witnessing of the life of Jesus Christ being lived through somebody else that's impacted our lives. We're in the church right now, simply, literally, because we are the church. This is who we are. And we're going to finish one day also. We all have our sights on a future as well. What will tomorrow bring? You know, in times like this, in certain settings, God doesn't make sense. Let me make you mindful of something. God was never and did never expect us to where he would make sense to us. No, God created us to sense God, to be sensitive to God, to know his voice, to know his heart, to understand his will, to understand his nature. And it's been unveiled to us who he was to Pastor Rob Tripp and who he is to God is the most important thing about his life. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, Pastor Kent appropriately at the very beginning made reference to these verses. And as we come to a closure... Jesus being the author and the finisher of our faith. It's quite fitting for me to make these remarks. I'm going to speak on the behalf of Pastor Rob. I had a unique opportunity to be preaching for he and Pastor Shanda during this time when he went into the comatose state. I was in the church. They would not stop. They said, no, we're not going to cancel. This is what God is. He finished well. Finished well. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. Jesus came to the earth and said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Paul is now saying that same kingdom, 
that was extended to me here on earth is now reaching for me in my final moments and saying, now I'm taking you into your future. I'm taking you into your new season, your new journey. Paul knew we may not be able to comprehend what Pastor Rob knew or what Rob knew as a family member, as a father, as a brother, as a friend. But the reality is Paul knew where he was with God. You see, you will not be all ready. You will not be all ready to be a poured out offering if you're not already pouring out. Rob was pouring out consistently and constantly in his life with great concern. What mattered to him, he was faithful to. He was committed to. He was genuine towards and sincere with. Already poured out. You know, the bishop of the Moravian church in the 1700s, Count Zizendorf, he said, if my life were a candle, put a wick at both ends and let me burn for Jesus. I thought, how descriptive of this man's life. I mean, really, you could say dual, you could say bivocational, pastor and producer. No, he just lived life in every gift and every talent that he had. He used it. He didn't set one to the side. No more to give. He gave his all. I've already poured out. Paul told the Philippian church, we won't take time to go there, but he told those guys, he said, I'm being a, 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 an offering right now, a drink offering. He used the same words, but it was like it was while he was in it, like maybe eight years ago or, or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. He knew that he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. Now he came to a finish. You see, he had nothing left to give. He was a giver. Time of departure. So often we live for seasons and we miss the times. If you were to read Ecclesiastes, there's a season, but there's 14 times. I just kind of recognize Pastor Rob as one who was in time. In the time that was needed, he was who he needed to be in that time. Notice the children didn't speak to him, of him as a pastor, but as a father. People didn't speak to, of him as the producer, but as a friend. Even though he did all those things, it was much deeper. He was in time, and he was on time with that. So here's the F's in these closing remarks. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have fought. He speaks in past tense. I fought all the fight that I had. I gave it all. I fought that fight. He was in a place that he contended for the faith. There's many things about Rob that do not describe myself nor possibly even you because he was him and you were you and I'm me. But we all have this one thing in common, faith. Every one of us have been given a measure of faith. But are, are we all fighting for that faith? Are we contending for that faith? He said, I fought. He went on to say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. Jesus is an author and a finisher. Rob was an author and a finisher. He finished what was set before him. As it was said, he kept his word. He was faithful to his word. When you say finish, you mean entirely done. Entirely done. Matter of fact, he took a long stretch the last month of his life, laborsome, finishing each and every step he needed to take until he could get home because family was first and foremost to him in those relationships. He said, I've finished the race. I have kept the faith. It's so important for us to realize our faith wants God to produce our desire. And God said we have the right to make our requests known to God. But the reality of all things 
Is that even though our desires may not always be fulfilled according to where we appropriated our faith, the reality is life only matters is that you and I keep the faith. If you finish with the faith, you've finished well. You've finished right. This family has finished with the faith. They believed God to the last breath that it was possible. And you say, but why didn't it happen? Because he was finished. We don't have the right to mess with the sovereignty of God. He knows all. And with that, we need to be good. But you and I need to walk out of here with his last message. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. I sat with a family last night around a table, and every one of them said verbally, I will keep the faith. They believe as well today that God could raise the dead, heal the sick, cause the blind to see, and the lame to walk. And you know what? They're going to see that in their day. They're going to experience that in their day, probably greater than they have even before because of a mantle that is left for them. He said, I've kept the faith. Here's another verse 8. Finally. Quite often, one of our most favorite words in church. Finally. He says, finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Finally, after a prolonged time and the end of a period of time. You know, the reality is eight years ago, we could have lost him. But he fought a good fight, and so did his family. And now through this prolonged time, through this passage of endurance... He's finished. And it's a good finish. He's finished well. You could literally say, well done, my good and faithful. So often we think faithful means more faith. No, it means being fulfilled with the faith you've been given. He's a faithful believer. I want to say to the friends first that are here, I believe the Lord stirred in my heart, meditating and preparing to speak on behalf of Pastor Rob, one of the highest honors I've had in and of my life in these last 32 years of ministry. Rob would say to you in a testament of his life, live to give. Live to give. Rob, on what I know, one of his last energetic moments of his life, he got up and he said, I'm ready to preach. I feel so good, I'm ready to preach. He wanted to give. Friends, if you're in the ministry, you'll understand, and each area has its own category of which would stand. But if you're in the ministry, preaching is giving. It's costly. He was ready to give. One more go at it. I was the recipient that having preached those nights at their church and ministering at Fireplace, as we've been doing for some years now, he sent word, his last act, his last act in role as a senior pastor was he told Pastor Shanda what to give me and make sure that's what I had when I was done preaching. And it wasn't this offering Matter of fact, that offering was prior bigger than, than what the, the meetings could have brought in. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure it was. What am I saying to you? Pastor Rob Tripp was a generous man. God is a generous God. If someone is godly, they must have the attributes and the likeness of God in their life. God so loved the world that he gave that he gave, that he gave. He was a generous man. Family, I want to see, say the simple phrase back to you, keep the faith. It was that faith surrounding him that allowed him to be the man that he was and is still to you and I. Knowing that faith 
cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Knowing that David said, your word I've hid in my heart. And knowing that in David's day there wasn't a scripture. So often we think it's just scripture when we say the word, but it's literally the spoken word of God. It's literally God speaking, and he speaks in various ways, but yet through his son. But Rob believes strongly in the prophetic ministry. Believes strongly in the word of God. And I want to take a moment and speak to each family member. Pastor Shanda, God is gracious. And his grace will not only be sufficient to you, but it's going to become multiplied upon you. Your ministry is about to soar with the wings of eagles. You're getting ready to go to and to embrace and to attain and obtain what God has created you for. You have been prepared. You've been equipped. You have been shepherded and washed with the word. You have been loved and cared for. He even became a father figure in your life at times, in the early stages to build you to where you are. The Lord wants you to know that his grace is going to be heavy upon you. Rich will be his mercies, and his faithfulness will not deny you nor disappoint you. God is for you. God is with you. God will fulfill all things. None of the dreams, none of the conversations, they may not come about the way you first thought they would be, but they all shall be fulfilled. Madison, you're a gift of God. God uniquely, fearfully, and wonderfully made you. And at times you've wrestled and struggled with that. Wondering, am I enough? Can I do this, do that? The Lord said, sweetie, you haven't seen it yet. And he, says, he calls you sweetie. And it'll be a secret word that he shares you because you carry the fragrance of Christ. You carry the likeness of his desire. The Lord would have me to say to you and Jared that you will see many come through deliverance. You'll see many walk out of captivity and walk into relationship and walk into their own fulfillment. The Lord says, because of your humility and because of your meekness and because of your gentleness, pre-adventure, many will see the Lord. You will protect people from going through things they don't have to go through that otherwise they would, they would be led into. You will lead people into the fullness and you will save many through your work of ministry. <laughs> Hannah, as I now affectionately say, Hannah girl, the Lord would want you to know that your happiness, you're a vessel of joy, and you are, you are a plan of purpose. The Lord would want you to know that you have a portion of the mantle of his humor. But you're going to make many hearts joyful. But the Lord would also want you to know that he's going to allow you and position you to smile at the days to come. And to laugh with the fullness of joy. But the Lord also wants you to know that you have the mind of Christ there is a spirit of discernment inside of you, and there's a prophetic edge that is being developed and equipped. The Lord wants you to know that he is, and he will be, and you are, and you will be as well. The Lord wants you to know that as sickness will try to impend upon you and try to get close to you, that you have a victory already set about you because of the blessing that your Father laid upon you, and you will see your hands used to heal the sick. Lawson, in his steps, so shall you walk. You have a double portion laid upon your life. You've experienced 16 years of the portion of your father upon your life, and you will walk in his steps. You already are, as was said earlier. You'll walk in the music industry. You'll walk in the ministry as well. But the Lord wants you to know that there's coming a new level of portion upon your life, and it's the Father God Almighty that is going to reveal himself to you like you have not yet seen. And he will be there at every turn. He'll be there at every need. He will be present at all times. But I would say to the three of you, uniquely enough, I didn't know how this would tie together. I'm going to ask the three of you to stand, if you would, for just a moment. 
The children, yes. And I thought, how do I make the Mount of Transfiguration, Lord, that you're speaking and showing to me, real to them? But then I found out, I believe your name is Moses. There was Moses and Elijah. There was the fulfillment that Jesus sought when he met with the law and the prophet. Because Jesus came to fulfill all the law and all the prophets. And I declare over you this day, no matter what discouragement, no matter what despondency, no matter what you are challenged with, that all will be fulfilled that God has intended for your lives. You will lack nothing, but all things will be fulfilled. And what you can't figure out, God will transfigure out for you. I bless you with a movement of the Spirit of God that looks over you and said, this is my son, these are my daughters, in whom I am well pleased. And now may the Spirit of God crown you as your father's being crowned crowned with a crown of righteousness in Jesus' name. On behalf of the Tripp family, I want to say thank you so much for attending today, for showing your support, for showing your care and your interest, for wowing them, as Terry said. Interesting word. Try to say it backwards. Yeah. It works. But they want to say thank you for coming and being with them and showing your love and being considerate of them and representing that part of Pastor Rob's life. They would also like to let you know that you're more than welcome to come and join at the graveside. You can follow in the processional. And then following that, afterwards in Hendersonville, the Christian Academy, there's a meal. You're welcome to come and attend at that meal and fellowship together there also. May we pray? Father, thank you for sharing with us the gift of Pastor Rob Tripp. Thank you for allowing us to have experience such a generous, giving, caring, loving, sincere life. Lord, I thank you for the F's that he lived out. And Lord, in the world it seems like failure, but in the kingdom it's future. And we release him into his future. Continue to watch over and care for, support and strengthen the family through these days and through these years. And we thank you for your faithfulness, for your kindness, and for your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
stuff And there wasn't anything left to drain From my empty cup Nor the soothing over the pain And you're the sunshine after the rain And you're the music to love's sweetest refrain Then up ahead the lights of home It's over, my journey's now complete So let angels play their hearts so loud They come it's wow. Whoa. You know, you the one thing that. is true through all three of those clips. Well, that you're a good looking I man. was still sexy. <laughs> <laughs> In my moments of fear, through every pain, every tear, there's a God who's been faithful to me. And when my strength was all gone, when my heart, it had no song, still in love, he's proved faithful to me. Every word he has promised is true. What I thought was impossible, I've seen my God do. He's been faithful. Love and mercy, I see. I see. Though in my heart I have questioned, I've even failed to believe, but He's been faithful, faithful to me. Looked away the many times I could not pray. Still, my God, He was faithful to me. The days I spent so selfishly reaching out for what pleased me. God was faithful to me. Now every time I come back to Him, He is waiting with open arms, and I see once again. Happy, glad, and free am I. I will sing it out. I will shout it out until the day that I die. He's everything to me. Oh, his 
name is Jesus, and he died to set men free. So if you're in trouble and you need a helping hand, just call on my Jesus, friend, I know he'll understand. Happy, glad, and free am I. Happy, glad, and free am I. I've had many tears and sorrow Had questions for tomorrow There have been times I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation God gave me blessed consolation Did my trials come to only make us strong. Through it, all, through it all, sing it with us. Through it all, yeah. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned, I've, I've learned, learned to trust, trust in God. Through it all. So I thank Him for the mountains And I thank Him for the valleys I thank Him for the storms He brought me through oh, Cause if I never had a problem I would not know that God could solve them I'd never know, I'd never know God's word, yeah. Through it all, through it all. Somebody sing through it all, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned. Trust in God, yes, through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon 
His word. Trust in Jesus, I've learned to trust in God. 